Please turn in your Bibles today to the book of 2 Chronicles. We're going to look at an individual today who really attempted to follow God. This individual really gave his heart to the Lord. And he really tried to be a devoted follower of God. Now like all people who try to follow God, he did make mistakes. <clears throat> he made some serious mistakes. And yet for the most of his life, he was an individual that gave his life to God. His name was Asa. He was a king of Judah, a king of one of God's people. And the ways in which he attempted to follow God are ways that we need to imitate as God's people. And the cases in which he failed, these are the things in which we must avoid. The life of this individual is found in your Bible in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, 15, and 16. In chapter 15, verse number 2, here is the secret of life. Everybody's wanting to know what's the secret of life. Books have been written about it. Volumes have been written about the secret to life. How to have a happy life. How to, be, how to have a successful life. Here's the key to it. A man of God explained it to Asa very clearly. He explained to him, if you remain with the Lord, He will remain with you. If you will seek the Lord, He will be found by you. If you forsake the Lord, He will forsake you. This is the key to successful living. This is the key to everything that is good and right in this life. 2 Chronicles 15.2 This is the key to entire, our entire lives. We must stay with God. And if we will stay with God, then He's going he's gonna to be with us. If we will truly, diligently seek the Lord, we'll find Him. And if we forsake God, God is going to forsake us. What kind of life did this man live? Chapter 15, verse 8. He heard the Word of God. What was his response? Many of you hear it every Sunday. What is your response to the Word of God? When you hear the Word of God, does it do anything for you? Does it motivate you? Does your life change at all or just go on the same? This man heard the Word of God. And as a result of hearing the Word of God, this motivated him. This challenged him. He changed his life. He didn't just hear another sermon. This man changed his life when he heard the Word of God. Reminds us of those people in Acts 17, verse 11, the Bereans. It said they received the Word with all readiness of mind. They were anxious to hear God's will for their lives. They were ready to hear what God had to say. Are you ready to hear what God has to say for your life? First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Here's a group of people. Paul is thankful for these people. He said, when you heard the Word of God, you didn't hear it as the Word of men. But you heard it as it is in truth, the Word of God, which effectively worketh in you that believe. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 13. When they heard God's Word, it wasn't just another sermon to find something wrong with it or find which numbers were mixed up or to try to find something to criticize. 
when they heard the Word of God, they heard it ready to change their lives. When you hear the Word of God, do you change your life? When you hear something out of the Bible that clearly says you need to repent and stop doing that, do you repent? Do you change? Or is it just another nice sermon that you heard? When Asa heard the Word of God in 2 Chronicles 15 verse 8, it changed his whole life. And since he was a leader of God's people and he began to lead in a more godly way, it changed many people's lives. It changed an entire nation of people. One individual changed an entire nation because when he heard the Bible, he did something about it. He changed his life. And multitudes were changed because of this attitude toward God's Word. We really need to be careful in the church concerning our attitude toward the Word of God. In verse 8 and following, 2 Chronicles 15, 8 and following, what do we learn about this man that can help us? What do we need to imitate? What needs to be emulated in this man's life? What can we do better as, as a result of knowing about this one man? One thing you have to notice about Asa is his dedication and commitment to God and to God's will. He was thoroughly dedicated to God. He was thoroughly dedicated to the will of God, to the Word of God. How can this not remind us of what our Lord said to us? In Matthew 6, 24, when he clearly said nobody can serve two masters, he's going to hold one and hate the other, or love one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and riches. Matthew 6, 24, Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. It's not possible. You cannot serve God and the world at the same time. You cannot serve God and your lust all at the same time. In Matthew 6.33, He said, Seek first. Not second, third. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. In Matthew 16.24, Jesus said clearly, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's dedication, that's commitment, that's something we don't see in modern religion. Most modern day religion is not a 30-second cousin to what this says, even many members of the church. The dedication and commitment that is demanded by Jesus has simply been ignored. Simply because we come to a service, we think we've punched a ticket and we're going to heaven. Jesus wants your whole life. He is first place in your life or He is no place. He will not be second or third. Jesus has first place in the way you live, or He doesn't even rate. Our God will not tolerate a divided allegiance. The Apostle Paul made it clear in the New Testament. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. In Philippians 1 verse 21, he said, For me to live is Christ. Can you say that? For me to live is Christ. In Colossians 3 verse 4, he said, When Christ, who is our life, is Christ your life? Does He mean that much to you? Can you honestly say, Christ is my whole life? Colossians 3, 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall we also appear with Him in glory. Galatians 2, verse 20, He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Can you say that about your life? For me to live is Christ. Can you say Christ now lives in me? It's no longer I that live. In Galatians 6 verse 14, God forbid that I should boast save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me. Asa was dedicated. He was committed. Let's talk about his relatives. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 8 and following. Let's talk about his relatives. When he became king of God's people, he def- dethroned one of his own relatives. Now in the Hebrew language, the verse can either refer to this as his mother or his grandmother. It makes little difference. But think about this. When he became king, he dethroned her. He put God ahead of his own mother. Would you put God ahead of your mother? Would you choose God before you chose your own mother? How much did he love her? I don't know. Doesn't make any difference. No matter how much he loved her, no matter how close he felt toward her, She was wrong religiously. You can love someone to a great extent and they can be wrong religiously or the way they live or the way they talk or the way they act can be wrong. Regardless of how much he loved this lady, she was wrong. She had built an idol. He not only dethroned her and took away her authority, He stomped upon her idol. That was her religion. Now you think about the courage that took. Then He destroyed it. I had a lady tell me one time, I wouldn't put God ahead of my mother. Do you have a relative that stands between you and God? That's very unfortunate. That's very sad. Because if you do not repent of that, you will be lost for all eternity. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10.37, the language could not be more clear, ladies and gentlemen. He who loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus said that in your Bible in Matthew 10, 37. Can you place God ahead of your relatives? Can you place God ahead of those you love? 
If the answer is no, you cannot be in heaven. You say, that's so hard. That's what the Bible teaches. Can you imagine the courage it took? One of the hardest decisions I ever had to make in my whole life was to choose between my mother and the ways of God. And I love my mother. Which one means the most to you? Asa was a great man because he restored true religion. Look in 2 Chronicles 15, verse 8 and following. Look at what he did. He went in and tore down these idols. He destroyed them. This is false religion. He didn't have sympathy with them. He didn't say, well, I understand how somebody could believe this. We're all human. Live and let live. If that's the way they want to worship, if they're sincere, go to the church of your choice. What it, Churches don't matter. You know, that kind of junk that you hear today, even from some members of the church who are on their way to hell. Think about this. Religion does matter. The church does matter. It does matter what you believe. He is tearing down religion and burning it. And restoring, it says, He restored the altar of the Lord. You see, they had gone away from God. They had gone away from the Word of God. And Asa is restoring them to a right relationship with God. But you can't do that without true religion. And you cannot restore true religion unless you first destroy false religion. We must be sure in churches of Christ that what is taught about God, what is taught about Jesus, what is taught about the Bible, what is taught about the church, what is taught about the Holy Spirit and His work on the heart of man, we must be absolutely sure that what is taught can be found in the pages of the Bible. True religion can never be restored if we are going to be sympathetic toward error and false doctrine. We can never have the true church for our children and grandchildren if we're going to be sympathetic with error. Asa destroyed it. He burned it. And God commended him. And that's an example for us today. That God hates false religion. And so should God's people. So Asa was a restorer of the true religion. But before he could do this, he had to get rid of the false religion. But we have to notice in chapter 16, verse 7, verse 10, Verse 12, 2 Chronicles 16, those three verses, Asa made mistakes. All of us do. And so did he. The first mistake we're told about, he depended on the king of Syria instead of God. Who was the king of Syria? A heathen a pagan, an unbeliever, a person of the world. He placed more confidence in that individual than he did in his God. In chapter 14 and verse 11, he went up against a great massive army. He didn't have a chance. And in 2 Chronicles 14 11, he called out to God. And he depended on God. But in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7, what happened? Did he forget about 14 11? 
how God had delivered him from that great Ethiopian army? Had he forgotten that? Because in 16, 7, now instead of depending on God, he depends on the heathen. We must trust in God. We must trust in God. He is where our strength, He is where our courage is to be found. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Not in your own power. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Our faith must be in God, not in human beings. Human beings can help us on the way to heaven sometimes. But that's not where our faith must be. Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2, we must have our spiritual eyes always on the divine. Not on the human. That was Asa's failing, unfortunately. Then in verse 10, here's the second great mistake he made. He's made a mistake depending on the heathen. So the man of God rebukes him. The king? Even elders are to be rebuked in the church. No one is exempt from rebuking God's church. He rebuked the king. The king was wrong. Asa was wrong. The prophet rebukes him tells him the truth, and you know what Asa does? You remember in 15.8 how he responded humbly to the Word of God? Now when he hears the truth in 16.10, he puts the man in prison. He could have humbly reacted to this rebuke. The rebuke was needed, it was true. How do you respond when you are rebuked from the Bible? Do you get angry and mad? God's people should never use their influence in the church to try to hurt another person. For their own private gains and their own little agendas that who even wants to know. We should never use our influence, our power as God's people to hurt another human being. That's what Asa did. He used his power, his influence as the king. He used his authority and he hurt a godly person. You think God's just going to overlook that? Then in verse 12, we come near the end of his life. What a wonderful life he's lived. He's done so much for God's people. He has made so many advances. He has restored true religion. He has destroyed false religion. He has brought people closer to God. But near the end of his life, he got sick. A lot of people get sick near the end of their life. I guess that's just a part of getting older. You get sick. Asa got sick. And he depended too much on the doctors and he didn't rely on God. Nothing wrong with using doctors. I use a tub full of them. A lot more than I'd like to. There's nothing wrong with that. But we we must realize that God is the one we depend on, not other human beings. And Asa was sick and he depended more on human beings than he depended on God. He had a horrible disease in his feet. And he didn't depend on God. He died in that pitiful condition. Now think about that. What does this teach us? You can be faithful to God all of your life and then right near the end of life when times get hard for most of us. That's not the time to give up when we get older. You shall be hated of all men for My name's sake. He that endureth to the end 
the same shall be saved. Matthew 10, 22. God wants people who endure through sickness, who endure through trials, who don't just throw their hands up and give up, who don't just depend on other human beings and stop their trust in God. Asia should have realized all his life where his strength came from. Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Asa forgot. You know when your feet hurt really bad? Or your leg? or your voice, or whatever. It's easy to look away from God. It's easy not to trust in God. It's easy to ask all kind of questions. Well, I don't deserve this. What have I done to deserve this? You know, people in the world go through all kind of trials. Why should God's people think we shouldn't have them? This shouldn't happen to me. Why shouldn't it? That's what we ask. Why should this happen to me? Why shouldn't this happen to me? If it happens to the people in the world, why shouldn't it happen to God's people? Is our minds clean off on the mothership so much we can't understand? That this life is just a short, temporary time. It's like a breath of air and it's gone. And all that matters if we stay faithful to God. Asa was a great man. But he made some tragic mistakes. We need to be sure that we don't repeat those same mistakes in our lives. We need to emulate His example of dedication. His example of commitment. His example of obeying God. His example of submission. How do you submit to God? Well, first you have to believe what He says. You have to believe it when He says that Jesus is My Son. But you not only have to believe that, you have to turn away from your ungodliness. You have to repent. Luke 13.3 That's the way you submit to God. Turn away from your ugly life right now. Turn away from it. Don't excuse it. Turn away from it. Repent of it. Confess the sweet name of Jesus before men, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Be immersed in water, Mark 16, 16, to have your sins forgiven. That's how you begin to obey God. That's just the beginning. And then the rest of your life doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your God. Give Him your life now while we stand.